Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey, and welcome back to episode 5 of my Satisfactory series here on YouTube. In this video, we're diving into automating rotors. A simple two-floor layout will pump out a whole 10 per minute, easily finishing the first phase of the space elevator. Ending the day off with some difficult hard drive choices, and finally picking up our second lizard doggo. Thank you for all the support and help with the series so far. Let's get to playing games. Alright, the hurricane's not going to stop me after all. Episode 5, Rotors. Let's do this thing. Welcome back everybody. It's hangout time in the old hub here. With our beautiful toilet. Our little game that I haven't played yet, but I will at some point. And then, uh, you know, beds that we all wish we could sleep in. But yeah, so we got a, uh, a generator hooked up here running basically just the computer. So that hopefully I can get this... Uh, episode up for you guys. They'll be a little bit shorter. Um, just, uh, you know, at least I'm going to get some videos up and uh, hopefully you guys are doing okay. Today we're going to, like I said, automate some rotors. We're going to do a little bit of a criterion research. We're going to choose some alternate recipes. I think I have two hard drives banked away now. And then, thanks to some tips from you guys last time, I'm going to hopefully find, or hopefully actually find, some more lizard doggos to head to our enclosure. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Um, I'm going to head on over to my original starting spot here in the grassy green fields. Which, uh, for if you're not familiar, it's pretty much right up over here. Um, there's a few iron, uh, a few normal iron nodes, which will make this a lot easier because today we are going to need 112.5 iron ore per minute to make 10 rotors per minute um, and we're also going to be using that cast screw recipe just to save us on some uh, some of our power usage here uh, and it'll save us some constructors as well so let's uh, figure out what we're going to need for this build and then we're going to head on over there get started I haven't built a platform or anything yet so we'll just kind of do that when we get over there I haven't really done any, done any much of my designs yet um, if you hear birds chirping in the background it's because we have the birds inside because of the hurricane but uh you know, hopefully, hopefully everything's fine, and uh, it'll just be as much of a normal episode as always, as best we can. Um, I probably will need to run around and grab maybe some leaves and stuff at some point, because my line of solid biomass is looking a little empty. Um, so we'll probably grab a few things, maybe cut down some trees, and then uh, get these bad boys filled back up. I don't think we're really running out of power or anything yet. Like I said uh, in the last one, we got lots. Lots of room to play with here, as long as we keep it fed, so let's uh, go over the build numbers, and uh, we'll go. We'll head on over. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I have to use my phone to, to use my build calculator, because I don't have internet on the computer. Uh, so we need one Miner Mark 1, and then we're just going to overclock it. We need four smelters, uh, one slightly, or they're going to be slightly downclocked. Nine constructors slightly downclocked, and then three assemblers slightly downclocked. So we're going to be saving a little bit of power, like we're going to be using those total. I basically have everything ready to go. I just need to go ahead and uh, handcraft a few rotors here before we head over. because, And then this will be the last time that we have to handcraft them. So we'll head on up. We'll get those crafted up, and then we're going to head on over to our little spot. Uh, what do I need, actually? I need uh, some screws. So let me go gather up some stuff, and then we can, we can get started. All right, if you've been a part of my series before, you'll recognize this area. This is the old starting area. This is where I've started the game a couple times now, actually. Um, so I knew this spot real well, and there would be three normal nodes here. One, two, and three. I can get 120 off each of these nodes if I want to overclock them, or I can just combine them together. Um, but I think, so ideally, I'm actually going to build my 10 rotors per minute off of these nodes and then uh, this factory is also going to eventually make um, our modular frames as well coming off these same nodes uh, so basically what I'll do is I'll set up a nice little factory here probably with multiple floors and then once we have a vehicle we can drive back and forth between there and uh, here I mean, it's not a crazy long distance so it should be easy enough I mean walking over here only took me less than a minute um, so I just need to go ahead and get these, uh, these ores taken out, but I have actually too much stuff on me. So let me go ahead and throw down just a little personal storage box here. 
And then fun fact I didn't know about actually, someone told me you can actually color these. So, I mean, you can give them like the, the finishes and stuff so they can be like kind of shiny now. Um, and I mean, or you can color them like whatever colors you want. It looks really cool. I think, a co I think the copper top box actually looks really awesome. Oh, cool. It actually like colors the, the screen here as well. Okay, so I need to make some room here. Uh, get some of this just extra stuff out of my inventory for now. And then now I can take these out. Alright, iron node's been cleared. Now let's set ourselves up a little bit of a platform to go off of. So I think I'm just going to use one and overclock it by pretty much all the way. So let me just go ahead and grab some two meter foundations. We'll get those hold down control, put those onto the world grid there. Actually, I guess I should put a little 2x3 down. We'll figure out where this miner is going to go in. So we're going to go miner mark 1. Oh, I'm going to stand right inside it. There we go, pop that one down right there. Okay, so from here, what do I think? So I need space for 4 smelters, 9 constructors, 3 assemblers. So... Let's maybe do two floors, and then one floor will have the smelters and constructors, and then the upper floor can have the assemblers. So maybe we'll go from like this spot right here. Um, let's go out by, let's go by 10. All right, I'm going with a four by 13 platform for now. So 13 long by four wide. That includes the area I've added for the miner. Uh, if you don't want to include that, then it's just a 10 by 4 So, like I said, this will be smelters and constructors, and then we'll build a second floor up above doing the assemblers. So let's kind of get our second floor leveled out here. I'm going to go switch to vertical mode. Uh, by 2, that would be 8 meters. Maybe 12, this would be about 10 meters. Because bear in mind, you'll lose two meters putting in the floor. So let's say we'll go up about that high. Gives us plenty of room to work with down here. Take out those ones for now. Uh, now I'm going to grab those two meter foundations. We're going to switch back to zoop mode. I'm going to add myself an upper floor off the very back corner here. I think I'll switch this one. So I'm going to call this about... This is giving me the room for the assemblers. So let's say a seven. So let's say a four by seven for the assemblers. All right, there we go. So that should be plenty of room to fit all our smelters, constructors, and assemblers on the upper floor. We'll make this look a bit prettier later on once we actually have more materials and more of the uh, cosmetics unlocked. Um, that'll probably be like a couple episodes from now. Maybe we'll worry about the cosmetics. For now, I just want to kind of get these rotors done and then in the next, I mean, by the next episode, we can do our uh, modular frames and then we'll also be able to finish off tier one of the space elevator. So let's get this build started, shall we, before this darkness rolls in on us. We're going to grab our four smelters here. I'm going to put them basically right in front of the, uh, so what kind of room have I got here? So let's say going off like the fourth one, because i got to be able to put in uh, splitters, right? So actually, let's just do that first. Let's go... I don't want to make things too tight. You know, why why waste the room when you got got so much room to work with in this world? This world is absolutely huge. So let's go, let's say we'll put a splitter here, number one. And then there will be a splitter, th or a smelter there, a smelter there. So we'll need another smelter here. So let's line these smelters up first, though. So let's go to the production up up on top of this smelter or this splitter here let's get these lined up we got lots of room to work with so let's say smelter there smelter there smelter there and smelter right next to that now lined up good so we'll need one more splitter here And then I'm going to need Mark II conveyor belts going in between these because this is going to move just, just under 120. Actually, these can be Mark 1s. These are just normal missions. 
don't know what I was thinking. It's crazy. Crazy talk over here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and throw down our actual constructors. They are going to be split up, so let me just reference back to my little build picture here so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I got it. So it is going to be... I'm going to take all four of these smelters. I'm actually going to merge them back into one line, which is then going to get split. It's going to be, it's going to sound kind of funny. It's going to merge all into one line, essentially to be a manifold line that's going to feed all the constructors. Because otherwise, I need to split this up into 62.5 per minute and 50 per minute. And in order to do that, that would mean I have to set like one of the, like, it would, it, it would just be a, a weird mess to kind of split these up properly. So um, you'd have to like overclock one slightly or do some weird, under, but like just to make it easier on us, especially for early game like this, I'm not going to worry about balancing it out too much. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab our logistics. We're going to grab some mergers. I only need two mergers, I think. Um, I think I'm going, to, I'm going to try and do it to where I get the line coming down right the middle like this. So I think what I'm going to do is I will just put an extra merger here, like that, and then I'll put one here. Actually, wait, how do I do this? I guess technically like this, and then like this, and this, this is going to use a couple extra mergers, but that's okay, I'm just because it's going to be a little bit cleaner this way. So, you can have Mark 1 conveyor belts coming out of everybody. Is there an easy way to do this? Probably. I guess technically I don't need this one. Okay, so we're actually not using extra mergers. So that's, not, that's good. We're just doing a weird merger layout because of uh, the design choices that I'm going to make here. So, from here, uh, I'm going to have a total of... What did I say? Nine constructors. So we'll probably have five down one side, four down the other, and it looks like we got just enough room for that, which is perfect. Um, I may have to add a little bit onto the outsides. I'm not really sure yet. But if I go right down the middle, we should be all right. So um, that means I'll need at least five splitters here. Let me try and get these down before the nightfall comes. So let's go, I want these right in the middle. That's kind of more or less where the constructors are going to be. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Look at that. Perfect. A great amount of space going through here. So this can be a Mark II conveyor belt in t like once you actually can um, come into the the rest of it here because you're going to combine this will be two 60s coming together we need this all lined up through here and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our uh, constructors that we need we'll grab them right here make sure I give myself enough room there we go, now they're actually lined up I'll be able to have a merger on the other side so this is going to be a little bit tight if you want if you want to add like a little bit more on, uh, like if you wanted to go like a, what did I go, four wide here? If you wanted to go like a six wide, or even if you went five wide and went right out the middle, you'd have a, you'd have more room, but um, it should be all right. So let me just shift this just a little bit closer like that, make sure I can uh, easily fit these mergers on the back. So we'll go one. Gonna get these lined up, there we go, two. Three, four, and five. That'll be my cast screws, I think. Yeah, cast screws gets more uh, gets more constructors, and then we get four for our rods here. So I guess technically you also don't need this splitter. I'll take that one out, and I don't need it to be uh, Mark II either. So that can be Mark One conveyor belt there, and then like I said, Mark One conveyor belt between all the actual machines. This will probably be a nice blueprint later on once we actually get these set up. Um, okay, so now that those are all done, I need to set these to actually do their rightful components. 
Um, this one, actually, you don't have to uh, downclock anybody, which is nice. Uh, the, the cast screws recipe is exactly five constructors for this uh, rotor recipe. So there is cast screws, and then we got rods. Copy that. This one I will have to downclock a little bit. So right now we're slated to make, uh, looks like 60 iron rods per minute, and I only need 50. So let's go ahead and we'll just drop this to 5. And then we'll set the other ones just normal. Then we're just going to put our murders on the back, and then, oh wait, actually, I mean, I guess it's pretty, actually pretty bright out, because I'm, I'm not using, uh, what's it, the lumen or anything like that. So we're going to merge these together. You can skip this first one if you want. You can go right to the second one. We're gonna make sure we send it off in that direction, though. That definitely missed where I was actually aiming. And then we're just going to do the same on this side. You can skip the first one if you want. You just gotta do Mark 1 conveyor belts coming out of your machines. And this is gonna move 250 screws total because this is the screw side. So we got 50 here. It'll be 100 as soon as you get here. So this isn't going to be a perfectly, um, what do you call it, 100% efficient layout until we get the Mark 3 conveyor belts. If you wanna split them apart, you can. Which maybe we will do that for now, just to make sure it's, uh, actually, does it run at, I think it runs at, like, five per minute. Until you actually, like, get it fully, like, get the belts fully going, so. Actually, maybe I'll just do that. So, yeah, sorry, it's just gonna run at 50% efficiency for now until we get those Mark three belts, because, I mean, actually moving 250, you'd have to set up three belts, which... That's just annoying, and I don't want to do that, so in order to keep this nice and clean early game, uh, I mean, if you just want to make five per minute, uh, like, from this layout, you could definitely, like, chop off a few machines and have a really simple, super rotor layout. This will definitely, like, fill up pretty easily. I mean, rotors aren't the most used thing, but I don't want to wait for things. I just want to, I want to get, you know, get moving with this, with these projects and, uh, you know, actually start moving into... The, uh, the next tiers, because, I mean, while I want to take this slow, I don't want to take it so slow that I'm, you know, people are like, I just want to progress, and this guy's taking forever. So, let's uh, let's get these uh, holes set up here. We've got a conveyor left hole put in here. I want to make sure it lines up with these mergers, though. So, it's actually going to have to be a little bit on the outside. We're just going to put it there. And then, same with this one. Put a little bit on the outside. Let's get our, for the rods, it's only 50, so you can just use a Mark 1 conveyor lift and Mark 1 conveyor belt. Why does that not want to connect? Oh, that's why, because it was uh, set to reverse. All right, that's all our rods hooked up there. And so now this needs to be a Mark II conveyor lift, actually. So we're gonna drag that down. Grab our, this is supposed to be a Mark II conveyor belt line through here. Oopsie. That was gonna be running at very little efficiency. Okay, so that is now all set up. So now we can go ahead and set, uh, head on up to the top. I'll just put some ramps up from down below. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use stairs for the first time. I haven't used any stairs yet. How can I, like, clip these on here? Is there an easy way to do it? Yes, there is. There we go. Look at that. Stairs. It's my first time using stairs in this game. Okay, so our assembly line here is going to be three assemblers. 
which I should absolutely have enough room for. So we're going to go, let's stick one right in the middle. And then we'll go from off of that one. There we go. So now I just need to put in two manifold lines up here. Let's grab our logistics for our rods. It's going to be coming out of here. Let's get this lined up. Um, okay, so the rods will do a little bit further back here. I'll go like that. And we'll turn it around. Make sure that's going in there. So there's our rods. Again, mark, just mark one conveyor belt since this is just 50 per minute. I can actually get that lined up. There we go. And you want your Mark II lift on top of here. I'm going to send... I'm going to send them in like that. Like inwards. Hope this will look good. I mean, kind of. It's a little bit funky, but... Actually, wait. Can I, what if I did... Alright, I ended up moving the floor holes. So it looks a little bit weirder down below now. Like it's not perfectly straight down there, but... That's okay. It'll be... That'll be our little secret, because they'll be hidden by walls at some point anyway. Um, so, I'm just going to get these finished off up here. Get the Mark 1 conveyor lifts put back in. Get you put in there. Mark 2 lift on the other side. And then I just realized that I need to uh, take these out. So that I can put in my splitters. My 3 high splitter stack. And then this one is going to be facing this way. Take out these bottom ones. Let's get a Mark II lift in here. Actually, duh. Instead of making a whole extra one. There we go. Pop those in between. Then we got some Mark 1 lifts we can put onto these. These are put, I put these out way too far. I still have to belt these in. Alright, belt it in. Cool, so now we just gotta set these. So these are gonna be rotors. Oh god. Okay, good thing I had the stairs there. Um, and then let's say, let's just say the middle one, we're going to drop down to two per minute. Okay, those are set now. We got all our screws and rods and everything set down there. So now I'm just going to add in power and we should be good to go. I just had to look over make sure I still record. I was like, please somebody didn't just build all that without recording. But we're good. We're good. Everything's good. We're going to now set and now I need to just stop falling off of everything. Uh, we can now set up our, we'll just set up a little storage box here in the back for some rotors. And, uh, let's get these all turned on. Alright, power is on. Iron ore is flowing. I still haven't overclocked it yet, I still gotta do that. But everything is set and everything is done. So that is automate iron rotors, or pff, automate rotors off the to-do list. This heat's making me crazy. Um, okay, so from here, I could, like I said, I'm just going to throw a quick little storage box onto the back so that we can just store these away, have it pop up and grab them when we need them. Just going to throw our mergers on the back of this, and then we can go head on over and do some uh, Keterium research. I guess technically I can save mergers for now. I just put these into the one. There we go, that is automate rotors all done. So those will be good for now. I'll come back and I'll pop the power shards into that in just a minute. Um, but we can head on back to base. We can get on moving with our Caterium research. Uh, I do have a little bit of Caterium left over. What did I have? Uh, 71, so if I smelt that up, it should get me a little bit. And then uh, we'll probably just have to head on over to the closest actual Caterium node that I can access right now. 
Um, I mean, soon the one we'll have access to is just just to the back of us here. There is a Keterium node. However, it is blocked by some rocks that we're going to have to be able to blow up with a Nobelisk. So I think the closest one I'm going to be able to use right now is actually just over there by the waterfall. So that'll have to be my, uh, my next best bet. So for now at least, let's go ahead and throw the smelter here. And that's going to be used for making the Keterium ingots once I get these done. Oh, my hard drive was done. I wasn't paying attention. So now we have bolted frame or Keterium wire. Or the bolted iron plate or cheap silica. The cheap silica is a good one. Makes use of, uh, gets you a lot of silica, which is using some limestone. But I typically, I don't really use this recipe very often, I don't think. The bolted iron plate isn't too bad. Um, because it just makes it iron plates and screws, uh, or it, I think it just boosts the, the production, yeah, boosts the production rate by a lot. So bolted iron plate is a really good one, um, but since I've already got my, uh, reinforced iron plates set up, I may not take that one for now. Uh, bolted frame is a pretty good one too that we could use in the next one. It would complicate things just a little bit, but, um, it should still be a, a pretty good one. Uh, Keterium wire is also another great one. Being able to get some copper wire out of stuff that you don't really use, but I mean, you're, you're using Keterium for the most part already, so not, not a great one, but definitely a, a good usable one. But yeah, for now, let's just get our uh, Keterium ingot unlocked here. So we can then move our way into quick wire. Research completed. Caterium ingot recipe unlocked. New Caterium research available. Okay, so there we go. We got to uh, get some Caterium ingots pumping out here. I may have to go grab just a little bit more of the Caterium to make it our make our way through the tree there. Um, which should be fine, not a big deal. What do we need for, uh, right here, container, there we go. I need 50 ingots, and then that'll actually unlock quick wire. So I'm not going to actually get to automating quick wire today, so tomorrow, or sorry, tomorrow. The next episode I do, uh, like I said, we'll be doing modular frames, and then after that we'll, we'll hop into some quick wire, because then we can actually start, you know, making use of some of the quick wire things, like the, uh, Zipline's a good one to have. Stun rebar, especially for spiders, is a really good one to have because they jump around and move around a lot. So I also have to look into getting the actual re rebar gun. But uh, yeah, let me go grab some Keterium, which is just over just over here. It may tell me about the one over there. Yeah, it's going to tell me about that one, but I can't actually use it yet. So for now, we're just going to run on over here and grab this one. Thankfully, it's also close by. It's just on top of this... Pretty much just on top of the waterfall here. Let me make a little stairwell that gets me up there. All right, there we go. This little easy stairwell up to our criterium here. It's not actually right here, but this was just a closer one to build to. It's actually scan again, just to show you guys where it is. Right there. Right. Actually, no, it is. It is right on this one. I think. Let me just go like this. Got a little platform across the waterfall here. That was not far enough. And there's the Caterium. Nice. Make sure I don't fall. Um, so I think while I'm here, I'll just throw a couple of these down on, on it. Just so I have easy access to uh, Caterium wire. Or the Caterium. So we'll load up on a little bit of this just to actually get the quick wire unlocked, um, and then we'll worry about... I'm not actually going to build my first Caterium uh, factory here. I actually usually just suck this one up and send it elsewhere, just because it's in such a weird spot of the map. Um, the first one we'll use is once we unlock the Nobelisks to blow out the little bomb things to blow up that rock so we can have access to that one, because I like just kind of having everything sort of localized down there. Like, even our, our first steel setup and everything is going to be over there, so... Uh, it should be a good time. Alright, I've got plenty 
of Caterium Ore now we can take on back to base. We'll throw that in the smelter, we'll unlock that quick wire, and then we'll kind of decide which one of those alternate recipes we want. I may actually re-roll some of them just for just for funsies, because I haven't actually re-rolled anything yet. Uh, and then hopefully, very, very hopefully, uh, we're at least gonna get one more doggo today, is my is my goal. Give him give him one friend in there. Alright, Katerium ingots, done. Quick wire, researched. Look at us go. Okay, so that one's done at least. Once we can get into research Katerium completed. Electronics. Quickwire recipe unlocked. New Katerium research available. So more or less, this is going to get me like Mark II power poles and like some other better upgraded electronics and stuff. And then the other cool thing, we'll be able to use the zip line so we can zoom around on our power lines a little faster. I never really actually used it before, but I'd like to. And then also, like I said, getting that stun rebar is going to be really helpful. So that, I guess, is just going to be our Katerium research for now. Now that we've got things a little bit, just head, a head start on our next couple episodes at least. Um, now we're going to go ahead and choose our all recipes. I'm going to re-roll one just, just for funsies. Um, so I think I'm going to roll this one because I've already got my uh, alternate iron plate or I've already got my uh, reinforced iron plate setup done. I'm going to re-roll this one just because I kind of want to see what happens. Neat. Okay, so now we got copper rotors and fine concrete where you take silica and limestone and you get a lot more concrete. Um, these are these are okay. Uh, I'll take the copper rotor. The copper rotor is actually not too bad. I think I've done that one before. Allows you to pump out rotors with a with a little bit less. I mean, honestly, the the real rotor recipe I want is the steel rotor because that's the one you're going to use for making uh, motors. But uh, I mean, that's fine for now. Um, and then this one, I'm going to go with uh, give me the bolted frame. Why not? All right, let's round out today's episode. I know a little bit of a shorter one. Like I said, I'm kind of running on limited power and, and internet, so things have to be a little bit, a little bit shorter for now. Um, hopefully, things will be back to normal soon. But uh, from here, we're gonna go and try and hunt down another lizard doggo. And uh, someone did say if you just walk, that might help a little bit too. Um, so maybe if I don't, you know, crouch, slide, jump around everywhere, I might have a little bit better, better uh, time finding things. What is that up there? Oh, it's just like a... I see. I was like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, we're just gonna hopefully find at least one more lizard dog across from Hello? That's not a lizard dog. Oh, where'd you guys come from? I didn't even know you were in here. Just hiding away in your bush. Yeah, let's take these guys out really quick just so we can get some, uh, get some points. Turn these guys into some biomass capsules or whatever they're called. There's one. Oh, hello. Get back here, you. Sir, come back here. Let me smooch. There we go. Oh, maybe they were blocking, like, guarding like, what's up on the top of this hill here. I see. Okay, so we're looking for lizard doggos. We're just... We're gonna move slow. Hopefully we can find one. Some people did give me some tips on where to find them. So I'm just going to check like a few of those places really quick. And then hopefully cross our fingers that we actually find one. I might as well definitely be picking up some biomass while we're out here, right? Because we're probably going to need to refill our system soon. We got more than enough to last us to like long into coal power. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll try and search. Cause I remember I found one in the foresty areas. So maybe I'll check like the heavily wooded spots and see if I can get anything to come up in these. And if not, I'll just cut them down. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I think there was one here before. 
Whether he's gonna come back or not, I don't know. Well, a fuse blew, so there's a good chance I ran out of power, which means good thing we're grabbing stuff while we're here. But it's not really what we're here for. I'm here for the lizard doggo. Hoping if I maybe just don't sprint run everywhere for a minute and just, you know, maybe hang out in, a, in an area like this, maybe they'll just kind of start to spawn in. If we're real quiet, be real quiet. I found one! Aha! Where am I? Over by this little pool of water. Hopefully I can get him to come to me. He's like hiding in the bushes, so this might be a hard I don't know if he'll actually be able to see the pale berry that I'm gonna put down for him. Let's see, I think he went up over the hill here. I'm trying I don't wanna scare him into the poison, because then he'll just run in there and die. There he is, okay. Yeah, I don't know if he can... I think it might be too far. Maybe. Oh. Is he looking at it? I mean, he sees me. You see the pale berry? No. Oh. No. Why? All I did was put the pale berry down. Well. Guess I'll try again. Okay. It's been 30 minutes, but I found another one. Hopefully this one is not going to be afraid of me. Let's try putting my berries on the ground. Please come to me, sir. I'm dying of sweat in here. It is very hot in this room. Please eat my berry. Thank the sweet Lord baby Jesus. Welcome to the party. All right, now come join your friend in the enclosure. This will be another project on its own. It's getting him back to his, getting him back to the, the, the spot. All right, you coming? Where'd you go? How do I get you to come with me? This is gonna be a tedious task, isn't it? Probably. All right, we got him back. Ooh, that was an adventure. Two lizard doggos now. Look at that. Have you found anything? Great. Four reinforced iron plates. Just what I needed. Okay, so now these guys can just stay here, big chillin'. Put in the second door just for security purposes. And then, okay, so we got that off our to-do list then. And also nothing is working because I'm pretty sure we ran out of power. Did these guys have enough? I think maybe it was just we overjuiced ourselves. Yeah, okay, so we'll get this back up and running here. These all filled in. And that'll get our power back up and running. Put the leaves. I think I got a lot more wood than I did leaves that time. So we'll pop those in there. Should have enough at least just to get this going again, hopefully. Alright, power's up and running. Again, we got dog we got another doggo. We got our alternate recipes. We got our criterion research done, and we automated rotors. And it's probably a bit shorter of an episode. I did actually record longer than I meant to, just because it took so long to find those lizard doggos. I gotta fix my power again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's feeding in right now. It'll be okay. Um, yeah, thank you guys again. A little bit of a shorter episode, but uh, I'll see you guys again in the next one for some modular frames. Hopefully uh, everything goes well and this actually uploads properly and there are no issues. And I'll see you guys in the next one.